Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay, this is the last video in the 10 C's of Dave Canterbury's, and we're going to cover cutting tool in this one. And this is a big one. This one is a, very much a personal choice and an operation video because it's what you're going to need, what you're going to use in your environment. So let us define cutting tool. Well, it means any tool that's going to be used for a cutting operation in some form. And some of those are not so obvious, but for the most part, we're talking about our woodcraft knife. What's going to be the knife that we're going to be utilizing for our woodcraft needs? Now, old Nismunk, he was the expert, and much of today's stuff is based upon him, and he used three blades. He had a pocket knife. He had a belt knife, and then he had a small double bit axe, which had two edges and did two different jobs. And that was a great way to work it. And it's still even a good idea today. But it shows how, you know, he was in the north woods. I'm in the deep southern woods. And you got to look at your environment and what you're gonna need. So for example, for me, old Blackie, I've already said that my everyday carry is a Swiss Army knife. This is the Field Master model. And I carry this everywhere. That's the blade I have on me. That's an EDC. If I'm out here in the field, I'm going to have one of my belt knives on me. I run the w. Uh, William Collins uh, Blackbird Master Woodsman type knives. Those are my predominant knives, but I may interchange something else. And we'll get to that in a minute. And then I need a chopping tool, cutting tool. Well, for me, for me and the heavy cutting tool is going to be my kukri that I've had for God knows how many years. This is my hatchet. This is my draw knife. This is my bring so much to the counter knife. That's my cutting tool. So with a small pocket knife, a belt knife, and then this cutting tool, down here in the southern woods in lower Alabama, this is my go-to set for the eastern woodlands because in my environment, it does outstanding. It does everything I need. But is that the perfect choice? Absolutely not. Because you may live five miles from me, but the type of jobs you're doing may be radically different. And so your tools should reflect that. So, maybe you don't want to carry such a big belt knife. And you want to carry something small like this Mora. Perfectly viable as a bushcraft knife because the jobs this is going to do is going to be more of a precision carving and that type of deal. Maybe you want to practice, you know, carving trap parts or doing just small dingle sticks or just basically, you know, cutting jobs in camp for cutting up dinner and stuff like that. This does a really good job on it, and it doesn't weigh nothing. You see a lot of these, and I wore one of these for many years as a neck knife because it was quick and handy to have in a camp for like that. So I had a pocket knife. I had this, and then I had a kukri. Excuse me, but what are your cutting needs? Okay, it's not limited to just this. You gotta broaden your horizon a little bit and say, even with Blackie, I interchange things, okay? Say, what's on the agenda? I'm gonna be doing small game processing more than anything. Well, I've got a LUT skinner for that. That's a specific tool for processing game, either fur bearing or for meat. That's what this knife excels at. So we're going squirrel hunting, and that's what this whole camp out is. You and I are going to be going out for two days or whatever, and we're going to squirrel hunt, small game hunt, process it, put it into coolers to bring back home to put in the freezer. This would be a great knife to carry, wouldn't it? I'm not doing woodscraft jobs. I'm doing game job so that's when this knife comes in and that's where the um, pocket knife can still handle any little notching or fiddly things and I'm gonna be carrying a kukri so that'll handle the bigger job so now this interchanges and becomes its niche see what I'm saying well how about we're gonna be doing crafts we're gonna be doing woods craft of some type we're gonna be doing more in-depth stuff. Maybe I want to take a small knife that is better suited to the tasks 
and this is the WCNK, and this is my favorite crafting knife. It fits the hand perfectly, and so I can sit there and do that. I'm gonna do. We're having a feather stick challenge. I'm gonna pull this out. Just, you and I are gonna go head to head. This is what I'm gonna pull out because I can control it so well. I love my Master Woodsman, my Blackbird, but this one is just perfectly suited for those jobs. And I can process game, I can do, etc. And as you're seeing, there is no one knife. There is no one cutting tool. There's what's the job. Now I can get them to do other jobs, of course. But what am I trying to come up with? What am I trying to utilize? And that's a tool I should be carrying. Maybe I don't want to tote the kukri. Maybe what we're going to be doing is building some sort of shelter and I know that I want to be able to pound in a lot of stakes to make a little low wall where I'm going to be cutting stuff down and pounding in. Well, a hatchet with a good pole head would be a good choice then. So, pocket knife or a small mora. Now, I may want to carry a bigger bushcraft knife and I want to carry this because this is going to do the thing of chopping it to size and pounding it in. Or maybe I don't even want to do that. Maybe I don't need the bigger knife. Now maybe I need something else. See? How about a machete? Perfectly viable as a woods tool, depending on your woods. Now down here in lower Alabama, I'm living in a semi-tropical jungle. Vines are everywhere. And that's one of the reasons I choose a kukri over a hatchet for most jobs. Because for processing wood, the kukri does a great job, the hatchet does a great job, but for going through this thick stuff and you gotta cut vines out of the way, the kukri beats the hatchet. Well, we're going into the thick stuff where we're just you know, we're going to have to cut trails in. Kukri, or maybe this would be an advantage, see? Because what am I doing? Can I draw a knife with this? Yes. I can do a lot of jobs with this. I got a 90 degree spine on it back down here at the bottom. I can use it for a flint striker, for a wood scraper, to process firewood, shave fat wood down and be able to use it as a striker to get the fire going. I got a lot of uses I can do with a machete. I just like the kukri better than I do a machete, but machete is a very viable choice in my woods. It may be in yours, depending. Now, let's look at further out west, where you don't have deep woods. You got mostly scrub. You know, your long waterways and things, you got scrub stuff. This is perfectly viable and primary because you can split thin wood, cut down thin wood, etc make your firewood from that and this will do that job very well then my cookery is overkill and this is a superior choice see how about I want a knife that does everything I only want to tote one thing blackie one of one two options well that's what something like this was created this is a WCSK this was designed to be a pounding tool, to be a wood splitter, to be a chopping tool, to be a up-close knife, to have all the angles and stuff. That's a one tool right there. Now, it does many, many, many things well. It's a jack of all trades. It excels in many things, and it's more inadequate in others. The machete's got a greater reach, but could I cut vines and stuff with this? Yes. Can I pound tin stakes with this? Yes. Can I do detail work? If I choke up here to the tip on it? Yeah, I can. That's my knife skills. And the whole thing about cutting tools is your skills, your ability, and what's the job that we are doing at the moment. How about something a little unconventional? Can a entrenching tool be a cutting tool? Absolutely. A good steel one got good heavy steel can be beveled and sharpened over here and you can cut trees down with it you can split firewood with it you can still dig with it there's all kinds of things maybe in your environment this is the superior choice because what am I doing well I may have to dig or whatever da 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 well then therefore I can dig with my kukri but this is far superior to it I can chop firewood with this I can 
bust up down limbs and things to make my firewood with this. So this becomes a knife and this could be very viable as a cutting tool. Okay. Let's not forget the other side of that. Sometimes you don't even need or want a chopper. Sometimes it's a much better choice to have a saw. This is a folding saw. Folding buck saw. It goes in here. Got two blades in here. Now, that is an entire saw ready to go right there. All I got to do is spend five minutes, put it together, and I've got a buck saw. What can I do with a buck saw? I can cut down small trees quickly, easily, and quieter than I can with my other chopping equipment. And therefore not attract as much attention if I'm trying to be a little bit stealth. I'm also able to make more functional lumber. I can split and rip wood instead of having to try to just randomly split it. To make boards and things, I can do with a saw. So a saw is a great cutting tool. When, in fact, whenever I design the Blackbird haversack. One of the things I thought of was the fact of making this hollow handle so I could carry a buck saw blade in it. Because with a buck saw blade, that's the hard part, remember, I can take my knife and create the rest of it. That and a piece of paracord and a winder and a couple of things, and I can make a buck saw in the field. The hard part's carrying the blade. This allows me to carry the blade. But like my silky saw. That I currently carry. The silky saw is a cutting tool. It cuts firewood. It's also got a 90 degree back spine so I can shave down for stuff like that. I can use it like this on a fish can I, as a scaler. Could I cut open a fish? Yeah you could but it wouldn't be pretty. But could it do it? Yes. So if I pair this with a pocket knife, I'm not planning on chopping anything. A pocket knife and this would be a viable set in certain conditions and environments. And see, that's just it. And that's true of the entire 10 C's. The 10 C's are a checklist, a guideline. They are not a unto itself, only this and nothing more. They open up the possibility and the ideas of where I want to go with this. So, in conclusion, the cutting tool is what you need, what your skills are, what are your environments, what job are you doing. What would I recommend for someone just starting out? I would say just starting out, get a good pocket knife. Practice whittling with it. Uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Great place to go look. It does not have to be an expensive knife, just something that holds an edge well. And sit there and practice. Learn the basic knife skills. A belt knife could be a mora or some even a condor or something you don't have to invest a lot of money build the skill then invest okay now many people are going to call that a little bit you know blackie uh you're toting a 300 something dollar knife that's true it's because i've got the time in i've got the skills in and for me and my experience my time i can make this knife sing of my time and experience but where did I get this time and experience off of cheap knives off of cheap axes off of cheap saws that you're gonna make mistakes when you first start it's, it's how we learn and I would rather screw up and break a Fisker's $12 saw pruning saw from Walmart or something like that then snap the blade on a $40 um, saw, silky saw. I would much rather do that when I'm learning. When you learn how to do it where you're not bending blades and you can stay in line and you've got the muscle memory, yeah, upgrade your saws. You'll notice a big difference then. You don't notice it at the beginning because you ain't got the skill. The knives, the cutting tools. I taught a class Oh, two, three years ago now. And a group uh, wanted me to do some basic knife skills, about 10 or 12 of them. 
And so I went to the dollar store and I got those one dollar stainless steel kitchen knife. They're junk. They're just unbelievable junk, and we know that. And so we started at eight o'clock that morning, and I had a bunch of really soft sticks, and we started carving. And I started showing them how to do a tri stick. Here's how to do a pot hook notch. Here's how to do whatever. And those knives were awkward. I had sharpened them, so they were sharp. But the edges rolled. They were easily broken out. They just, you know, by lunchtime, over half of them were so frustrated. And that was the point. And so at 11 o'clock, I had everybody take those knives and throw them in the trash can. And we ate lunch. And after we got done eating our sandwich, I gave every one of them a more knife. These more knives are not expensive. And you'd be amazed how much more they could do with that knife. Because now they had a knife that was designed for the job. And they had acquired a little bit of skill with that piece of junk. And so now they took this. And, oh man, this is so much easier. And their confidence went up and their ability went up because of an improvement in the knife. Because now they knew the difference. They could see it. And when they get really good with this, they move up a little. And whenever they get really, really good, then you invest in one of the custom things, and that's when you use it. It's a process. It's a step-by-step. -step. And the cutting tool is the most personal thing that really you're going to have out of this. Because I can walk around and vent and look at the knife people are running and have an idea of, one, what they like to do, and two, what their economic level is, and three, what their skill level is based on that knife. You can have really experienced guys running really cheap knives. They have a reason. Doesn't mean they're inexperienced, but they can get the most out of it. And so the thing to remember is, no matter what, get the best knife you can afford, utilize it and get the skills, and trade up when you think you're ready to do it. That's my little advice. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching this entire series. And do me a favor before you leave, hit that like, share, and subscribe button for me and feed the algorithm. Till next time, I'm Blackie, wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.